Huberman, he put out a little, an episode, uh, at least it was a clip of an episode about marijuana, right? And how it affects the brain and body. And this got people very upset because apparently I, I have no expertise in this, but judging from the reaction, the internet tends to be sensitive when people make comments about marijuana in general, right? Weed. But in particular, a lot of researchers responded, like one of them, Matt Hill, said, from someone who has studied this field for over two decades, I can comfortably say that virtually everything said here is inaccurate. It is incredibly disturbing to me that someone claiming to be a scientist can talk with such authority on something they clearly know nothing about. And he gives examples saying CBD and THC are not interchangeable. CBD does not bind CB1. Its pharmacology is largely a mystery. THC does not trigger retrograde signaling. It's endocannabinoids. THC binds to the same receptor as endocannabinoids. Like all these details, I don't know, right? But it it sounds like he said stuff that got people worked up. And Huberman reached out and said, like, would you like to come on and discuss it with me? We'll include references and, you know, we can correct any errors. And the researcher is talking about, you know, should he go on or not? And I actually do still think that researchers should go on, but they should just be like Flint, where you come across personable, but you're very prepared for, you know, how to present the evidence effectively and how to counter what people will present in response. You know, the actual social aspect when you're there would lead to the criticism becoming much more blunted, right? And I do feel that sometimes people enter this naively, but it is also the case that like for Huberman, I think his response was strategically the correct one, which is to show he's open to, you know, discussing the science. He wants to get things correct. And he said he'll cover all expenses and fly the person out or whatever. So mm-hmm. he mm-hmm. now basically has, you know, narratively the upper hand that, He's made the reach yeah, and he's, the other he's, person. He's, he's, he's open to correction, looking to consult relevant expertise. But, I mean, I'm in two minds, eh, Chris, because I, I know that, like, responsible scientists and researchers are faced with the dilemma, which is that you've got this extremely popular figure like Joe yeah. Rogan or Huberman, and they have a massive audience, and that's a brute fact, and they are pushing misinformation repeatedly and just doing very a bad job of of reporting science or just just a realistic things things that aren't lies basically or untrue and the idea is that you're going to go on to the joe rogan show or the andrew huberman show and you're going to educate them you know what i mean you're going to share share your knowledge and they'll go oh i see right very good thank you i made a little misstep there but now now you've clarified that and i will yeah won't, that won't happen again. No, it absolutely is going to happen again, right? It's it's Joe Rogan's going to keep, you know, promoting yeah. this information. Andrew Huberman, he might be very humble even in this one and go, oh, that's very interesting. Yes, I see. I'm, now I've moder- moderated my thing. And then he's going to go back to doing what he does every episode because that's how he makes his money, right? Yeah. So I, I just, or I, he'll I, have someone else on to counter the some of the claims made. That's like another thing they could do. But I do think... This is why, like, I raised Flint, because I think if you approach that properly, like, it doesn't really matter if Rogan continues to have on Mm. ancient alien or ancient civilization people. Like, the damage is done, in a way, because now that that episode was so definitive in highlighting, you know, the paucity of evidence for the case. And, And so I think if you were to do what Flint did, it would be very, like, even if the people went on to contradict you and do what they're doing, you would still have done something positive, right? Like for science yeah. communication. But the issue is Flint did that by weeks of preparation, practicing yeah. giving the thing, you know, yeah. uh, twice yeah. with colleagues and, but, and, ha- and but, consulting. But that's like the thing. I know. And he doesn't get paid for that, right? He doesn't get rewarded no. for that. If this guy goes on to the Andrew Huberman thing and puts in all that effort and so on, he's not going to get paid for it either. Whereas Huberman does get paid. Joe Rogan does get paid <laughs> week in, week out for spreading misinformation. So I'm getting myself down, just setting it all out. But I, yeah, there is this big asymmetry, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. 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 And the other thing I wanted to mention about the Huberman was that I saw he had a guest on Casey Means. He was promoting this, like essentially 
somebody talking about nutrition, right? Like very similar to what the McKillen Peterson thing would be. But like Matt, I look just at her Twitter feed, right? It has all of the hallmarks. Like doctors don't learn about the real cause of illness. Mainstream medicine wants to keep you sick for profit. You were told to trust the science and refers to medical innovations like adding square quotes. And then famously amongst, you know, alternative medicine and pseudoscience claims that there's one core thing that is responsible for diabetes, for Alzheimer's, for all, you know, like if we cure this, we will address all of these things. And then also making reference to the fact that they were Stanford educated while saying, you know, that all doctors are lying to you, but but their credential is still important to their case. And now they have a system. That you can sign up for. No, you right, can sign up for. <laughs> so, so, many red flag, so many red flags. It, what, this is the one Twitter. Yeah, <laughs> but it's it's so recognizable, right? And Huberman had them on to say, this person is, you know, going to give you the lowdown on nutrition. And the charitable thing is he has a low ability to spot cranks and a high level of credulity or, and the more, very more likely thing is like, those red flags are of no concern for him and he shares a lot of the I think they're a plus. Those red flags are a definite plus because his his business is in promoting cranks and being a crankish himself. That's the business model. That's what people want to hear. They that they want to hear that the thing that the doctors don't want you to know, actually, it's inflammation. Inflammation is the cause of all these different <laughs> things. Here's the one yeah. simple trick that you can use to solve that. I mean, you know, that's the product, right? The product is is cranks and being a crank. So, yeah, yeah I, 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 I'm sorry. Yeah. I just, I despise them. I'm sorry. It's just, it is so terrible. It's one of the things where just the narratives repeat, you know, like all those flags that we talked about, you can equally apply them to the people that were anti-vaxxers, like talking to Joe Rogan. It's always the same. It's always the mainstream medicine is lying to you. Doctors don't really care about treating illnesses, right? You know, the all these yeah. things. And they always tie it to... Well, are you saying the pharmaceutical industry is perfect or, you know, like this is the the kind of thing. So it was just, it was so obvious. And like you said, Huberman doesn't care. And that kind of is his brand now, but it wasn't his brand, Matt, right? Or at least his brand was supposed to be not that. And I think originally was more Mm. uh, like sticking to, you know, relatively well-supported science and- But he discovered- along the way that there's just so much more money to be had doing the other thing it's it's for me it's exactly analogous to um john campbell the the anti-vax guy yeah who like you said it's exactly the same when he started he was making totally unobjectionable if boring videos about uh, nursing education and he discovered that there is a massive market for for doing anti-vax so he he does that so that's kind of why i despise them like yes yes they're cranks you know, yes, they're making all kinds of errors and they're they're bad thinkers and they're not good at assessing information. That all may be true. But the main thing for me is that they're, they're focused on making money and they don't care I'm how they make it. presenting it as something different. Like, yeah, they, they, yeah, they don't care basically that they are being cranks and promoting cranks and promoting probably dangerous in some cases or at the very least profoundly unhelpful. You know, like, yes, the, the links with vaccines – to harm is a really direct one, right? And you can see that directly. Yeah. But to, to someone who's saying, oh, actually it's inflammation or something that's the true cause of all your cancers and you shouldn't be worried about this, what you should do is like the steps to it causing bad consequences are maybe a little bit indirect and more diffuse, but it's, it's still bad. It's still quite harmful encouraging people to go down that direction and they, they're doing it to make money. Listen, listen to this, Matt. This is from a video that they were in. The title was the 10 tr- trillion industry keeping us sick and how to become your own healer. Um, oh, for curious sake. as to how Alzheimer's, type 2 diabetes, insomnia, anxiety, infertility, and even cancer can all be connected to our metabolic health and what to do about it. Frustrated that no matter how much we spend to get well, the healthcare and food industries are incentivized to keep us in a revolving door. Blah, blah, blah. Right. That's that's the thing. We, yeah. it, and it's it's always retreat to, oh, you're saying metabolic things aren't associated with health. And you're yeah. like, no, but you are presenting it as you're basically the guy in the Western town in front of the 
quacked stamp with the very good <laughs> with, the, 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 with the literal <laughs> bottles of snake oil. Yeah. 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 Only just, only ten dollars. Step right up. What the medical institution doesn't want you to hear. I'm like, a simple <laughs> solution that will cure all ills. So yeah, it's that's it, that's what it is. 